The 50th World Economic Forum has kicked off in Davos amid climate change protests that began on Sunday. Protesters are urging some 3,000 world and business leaders to prioritize environmental concerns. And this comes as an annual risk survey by the World Economic Forum found for the first time that the top five long-term risks were all environmental. Well, as participants braced for an address by U.S. President Donald Trump and climate skeptic as well, the Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg slammed climate inaction at a panel session. She told leaders that basically nothing has been done to fight climate change despite her high-profile campaign. The science and the voice of the young people is not being it's not in the center of the conversation yeah. and it needs to be because this is this is about i mean of course it's about it's about us and our future and uh, future generations and of course those who are already being affected today but especially we also need to bring the science into the conversation because that is what this is all about and the summit will run till Friday, with the spotlight expected to be on trade wars, record debt levels and tensions in the Middle East. Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif will not be present as the country deals with the fallout from the accidental downing of a Ukrainian jet earlier this month. Well, the U.S. president has announced in Davos that negotiations with China on a phase two trade deal will start shortly, adding that Washington's relationship with China has probably never been better. Now, this follows the signing of that phase one trade deal last week, delivering his keynote address at the World Economic Forum. President Trump also boasted about an economic boom in the United States. When I spoke at this forum two years ago, I told you that we had launched the great American comeback. Today, I'm proud to declare that the United States is in the midst of an economic boom, the likes of which the world has never seen before. We've regained our stride, rediscovered our spirit, and reawakened the powerful machinery of American enterprise. America is thriving, America is flourishing, and yes, America is winning again like never before. President Trump will be in Davos until Wednesday and is due to meet separately with the President of Iraq, Pakistan's Prime Minister, and the head of the European Union's executive body. Meanwhile, in Washington, his impeachment trial gets underway. So for more on this, we're joined by correspondent Simon Monks in Washington, D.C. Simon, let's start with what stood out for you in President Trump's um, keynote address at Davos. Well, I suppose, really, Glenda, the cadences that he struck. I mean, you could hear him there talking about uh, an economic recovery in the United States, the type and size of which the world has never before seen. Uh, I mean, that's hyperbole, and he's deploying it in front of people who know that it's hyperbole because his audience is uh, a group of uh, very senior other world leaders, captains of industry, captains of finance, technology, and banking. Uh, but these are the cadences that Donald Trump will be striking here in the United States throughout this year on the campaign trail. He firmly believes that his stewardship of the American economy and its recovery will propel him back into the White House for another term once the votes are counted this November. The other striking aspects of this speech, the stony silence with which the audience listened uh, to the president until uh, he finally addressed the issue of climate change. At one point in the speech, he dismissed activists like Greta Thunberg as prophets of doom. But he did go on to say that the United States will play a role in a massive international tree planting project globally. Uh, and that line was the first line in the speech to elicit some applause. This was Donald Trump liberated from the pressures, the immediate pressures uh, of the US-China trade war following the signing of that phase one agreement, pledging to take that forward and get phase two done. Uh, Donald Trump very much uh, trying to strike uh, a highly positive note uh, about the state of the American economy. And that, of course, is the message that he will be deploying here in the United States all the way through until November.
And Simon, Simon, while Donald Trump enjoys what appears to be that liberation while he's over there in Davos, of course, back at home, he's facing something else, the impeachment trial. How can we expect that trial to play out for him? Well, of course, it's more than symbolic, Dawn, that as we are hours away from the beginning of that impeachment tr trial, Donald Trump isn't here. He's off in Davos. He wants to be seen to be doing the nation's business and insists that this impeachment trial uh, is a hoax, it's a witch hunt, but he's facing serious charges, abuse of power, uh, obstruction of Congress. Uh, those charges contained in two articles of impeachment uh, that have been delivered by the House of Representatives to the Senate. This is a trial. The Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, will oversee it. The 100 members of the Senate are supposed to be impartial jurors, but with Republicans enjoying a majority uh, in the United States Senate, it would take 20 of them to cross the aisle and vote with Democrats to secure the two-thirds majority needed to convict the president and strip him of his office. That remains highly unlikely, even though there are some wavering Republicans that may force Senator Mitch McConnell, the Republican's leader in the Senate, to call witnesses at the trial, which is something he very much doesn't want to do. But broadly, the White House is absolutely convinced that President Trump will be acquitted at this trial, and despite uh, the mounting accusations and allegations against him, President Trump will claim that that is not just a complete exoneration, but perhaps the kind of exoneration the world has never seen. Simon, thank you very much for that. We've been speaking there to Simon Marks, reporting for us out of Washington.